Hi. So you might get a little lost and you might not understand, but trust me, keep watching because I have a very good point. And some of you might already have heard of this, but some of you might not have. I just found out about it and I just thought that I'd like to reach out about this topic because it's really important. So you're going to get really confused, but trust me, I have a point. So have you ever read this book? Huh? This book, Catching Fire, and this book, Mockingjay. If not, one, you're missing out because they're amazing. And two, you might get a little lost about how that has anything to do with anything, but trust me. Or have you read this book? And you, this wouldn't make sense, but I will tell you how this ties together too. Or, and I'm pretty sure you read this book. If you haven't, then something is obviously wrong and you need to like go to school. But have you read this book? I would hope so, or at least US history. If you haven't, then I would I would recommend an education. It sucks, but you will be thankful someday. But anyways, how this all ties together is because something especially in this book that shows is getting your beliefs out there and having a voice and especially in this it's about rebellion but that's not really what i'm talking about but it does say a lot about going out for what you believe in and stopping an injustice so this teaches a lot about it all three books it all ties together they're all amazing if you haven't there's a movie coming out in march that you might want to check out but anyways so that has a huge message there a lot about governmental things and getting your voice out there for what you believe in so that the government doesn't trample over you. And how this book has anything to do with, I met the author last week and it was for extra credit to be honest, but it was a really good speech that he said because something he did mention was how he's pretty sure because it's about how he never learned his father's life story until he almost died. And his father's from World War II, and he actually played baseball with prisoners from the German um, submarine army or navy or something. Um, and he, so it's about his father's journey in World War II. But the thing is, is how, what he stressed about in the, the lecture was how you never really figured out what your parents' story was. But that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is his point. He made a really good point. He said that there was two incidents in world in US history, the Civil War and World War II, that was so brutal and really horrible that that generation completely stopped talking, never told their kids about it, never really talked about it. So we never really got that history until now. If you've noticed, a lot of Holocaust stories and a lot of different stories like that have been coming out now for our generation because they're finally starting to get the stories from their kids um, who wouldn't get it until like their deathbed. But what he breached was that when he, like that, that generation didn't really talk. So in effect, the third generation, like the next generation, their kids, which were like the 50s and the 60s, had a lot of free will and were more spoken because their parents weren't. And that's where a lot of, a lot of civil rights movements and a lot of, you know, things like that. Like my grandma says, they never really messed with them because they would stand up for themselves. And as the kind of cycle goes on, because we come from people that were well-spoken for the most part, and I come from an 80s like generation. My, my parents were um, in high school in the 80s. but So they were a little bit more spoken, not really caring and stuff. But we kind of are, quote, the don't care generation for the most part. And we don't really go for what we want too much. We kind of like, oh, we'll deal with that later, you know? If you know what I mean, some aren't, but... For the most part, right. But something we need to do is fight for we what we want. We have such a great like way to technology. Before they didn't have that. They couldn't get points across. And that's the reason I have a YouTube channel. It's because I like to get my points across and my voice heard. Because I feel like my voice is um has a right to be heard. And so that's where we come from 
our topic. So there's a problem. The government is trying to censor our internet. If you so this is where this little handy dandy book that sometimes I totally hate when it comes to homework, but teaches a lot, is fighting for what you believe in. There's a lot of patterns, but if you would know from world history, there's dictatorship and um, a lot of, like, uh, like Russia and, or Russia used to, like the Soviet Union and China had, you know, censored things where you couldn't really hear, especially especially North Korea, I'm pretty sure we all know that, but where their internet is, you know, censored, people can really, you know, you wouldn't hear, like, they don't have Facebook, I don't think, I really don't think, but they don't see everything, and so they don't know that they're, you know, being run by communists and that kind of stuff and what they're doing, and the USA is trying to do that to us, not the, you know, communist part, but they're trying to censor our internet. So something like this video would not be able to be seen. And do we really want that? We are such freedom people. Isn't that what USA is? We're freedom. And censoring is not freedom. If you've ever read Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury, Bradbury, that's another book we read in English, his book got censored. And the whole book theme was censorship and how it's wrong. And how, if you've read it, you know that the censorship led to some kind of war. And how they become all lifeless and without books and all this kind of stuff. And that's another good story, too. So check that out. But it's a huge topic, and his book got censored. And it's kind of ironic because his whole book was about censorship, yet it got censored. And stuff like that should not happen because... It's freedom. He was allowed to write what he wanted to write, and they were cutting it away from us to see. So they're thinking of doing that for the internet. And what I wanted to do is I want everyone to realize how many things, how many signs other generations have given us to stand up for what we believe in. I mean, sure, we're not the 60s generation, but we have, like, we have every will. We even have more will with technology and better communication to get our point out and our voice out, yet we're all kind of too lazy to do it, that we should do it while we can. Um, we might, I've just found, about, found out about this now, and they were, I think they were having some voting on the bill today, but it's not too late. It's never too late. So even if it did get approved, it's still not too late. There is going to be some way that we will stop this, because that's not freedom. As much as, like, you know, they could try to say it's still freedom, it's not freedom. And that's what the USA is for. It's total freedom, and that's not right. At least in my opinion. Everyone has their own opinions. But if you agree with me, please, please help. And one way is this beautiful, beautiful site called Tumblr. And if you check on my Tumblr, um, I have it in the dash below. If you check it, I have a sensor over my face, my picture on it, and it's a stop censorship. And um, you can either click that link and to figure out how to get your voice heard by your house rep representative, or and um, to represent you. And or if you have a Tumblr, if you log in, you'll notice that on the top it says stop. Wait, let me move this so I can read it. Stop the law that will censor the internet. And if you click that, then it will. Um, some people on Facebook have been saying stuff and on Tumblr and YouTube and stuff. So you might have already heard about this. But if you haven't, I would just like to get the word out so that you can help. Because I say we make ourselves like the 60s movement. Like, you know, we have every opportunity to. So why aren't we? We even have more opportunity. They did not have the technology and the ability like we. We have really good en education now at least at my school I know and so why aren't we and a big part and of like history and social studies if you don't notice they're teaching us little hints like you know get your voice heard and they're showing us patterns in history so that if it repeats we know what to do that's what history's for I know it seems pointless when you do it but it's teaching us that so help out 
um, comment what your opinion is and any way you can help out at all and check out my Tumblr or, you know, all that or just, I guess you can Google it and find it and the link or anything, but yeah, so I just like to try and help out, so tell me your opinion or whatever and hopefully this does not happen because the internet is everything to a lot of, especially my generation, and without it being, if it was censored, I can't even imagine it. And it wouldn't be the freedom it's supposed to be in USA. It would not really be USA, and it's just, I'm speechless about it. It's just, I think it's just horrible. So, let's stop this. Please help out as much as possible. Every voice counts. All it is is a click of a button, and that's it. You know, get the word out on any possible thing, and like Twitter or Facebook or YouTube or I don't even care anything, um, and it will help. And I wasn't going to make a video today because I'm sick, but I I felt like I had to get it out, get my voice heard. But yeah, thank you for watching, and please help.